Hey friends, it's Pastor Joe. Great to be with you today. So there was an older guy who went country line dancing for the first time. He sat for a while and watched the girls uh, do line dances. Finally, he thought to himself, hey, this isn't that hard. I can do this. So he got in line and he started moving. After a minute, he asked the girl beside him, what's the name of this dance? There's a story in the Bible about a group of people. They're suffering from leprosy and they cry out to Jesus for healing. Jesus heals 10 lepers. But the question is, how many of them come back to say thank you? Only one. Here's a point that I want to make with you today. It's easy to forget about God in the good times. It's easy to forget about God in the good times. We've got a bad habit of blaming God when things go wrong in our lives. And we have a bad habit of ignoring God when things go well in our lives. And when we're in trouble, we cry out to God. But what we often fail to do is genuinely say thank you to God. There was a man who was visiting a, a, a farmer's farm, and he, he looked in at the, the pigs, and he asked the farmer, why does one of your pigs have a wooden leg? And the farmer said, oh, that's a special pig. One night, our house caught on fire, and this here pig ran into the house, woke us all up, and saved every last one of us. The man said, wow, that's great, but, but why does he have a wooden leg? The farmer said, well, when you've got a pig this special, you don't want to eat them all at once. We don't know how to say thank you, but I believe that thank you is important. Here's the reason why. Because grateful words reflect greater faith. Grateful words reflect greater faith. Here's what Jesus says when one of the, 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 the former lepers comes back. He says, your faith has made you well. I believe that there are two ways to look at the things that happen to us. One way is to look that everything happens by chance, right? It's just blind luck. It comes by accident. And if you believe this way, then there's really no point in saying thank you because everything happens by accident. But here's a, another way we can look. Every good thing comes from God. Believing that there is purpose and meaning in every good thing and believing that God is able to use even the bad things that happen in our lives. Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love the Lord and have been called according to his purpose. I personally believe that God uh, in the end can take my mistakes, my failures, my tough times, my trials, my, my sickness, my heartache, uh, and work it all for God's glory. So when I say thank you to God for the things that happen in my life, for the good things and the challenging things, I'm not just expressing gratitude, but I'm expressing my faith that God is in control. One of the ways we say thank you is by counting our blessings. Counting our, our blessings isn't really that hard to do. It's just the opposite of what we normally do. Normally, we count our complaints, right? Normally, someone starts complaining and we quickly try to one-up them. Oh, that's nothing. Let me tell you about how bad I've got it. But when we count our, our blessings, we do it so that in the tough times, we don't forget the goodness of others and the forgiveness of God. I want to read to you something that I found about successful people. It says this, successful people have a great sense of gratitude. Unsuccessful people have a great sense of entitlement. Successful people compliment. Unsuccessful people criticize. Successful people forgive others. Unsuccessful people hold grudges. Successful people give others credit for their victories. Unsuccessful people blame others for their mistakes. Count your blessings. Count them and remember them as the song says, name them one by one. 
when you count your many blessings, we remember what God has done. Gratitude isn't about getting everything you want. It's about cherishing what you have. Jesus healed 10 lepers, but actually, uh, if you think about it in a way, each of us is someone that Jesus has healed. We were sick with the disease of sin and separation from God, and Jesus healed us, but not just with his words. No, for you and me, he did something much more. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus died a death on the cross he did not owe because we owed a price we could not pay. And the question is this. Before each and every one of us, the question is, what will be our response? An older guy went country line dancing for the first time. He sat for a while and just watched the girls do line dancing. Finally, he thought to himself, hey, this isn't that hard. I can do this. So he got in line and he started moving. He asked one of the girls, what's the name of this dance? She said, this isn't a dance. This is a line for the bathroom. Church, stop standing around waiting. Give God thanks right now. Amen. Amen. God bless you.